Well, this evening, we'd like to say God bless you, and this is the first Wednesday of February, uh, and here again, God has allowed us to see a new month, and, and we just thank God for all the things that he is doing in your life and in our lives. When we teach certain things, we want you to understand that God, uh, we believe that God has moved on our hearts to teach certain lessons and uh, certain uh, teachings because he wants to bless us. And God is a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of wisdom. And a lot of times God will have us teach things that seem like we should be teaching just the opposite or should be in another area. But God always knows because as soon as we start teaching, he begins to allow things to manifest themselves by which uh, we, we need the word that he brings forth or is bringing forth. Today I want to start uh, right at Malachi uh, chapter 3. And uh, we want to begin here at verse 10. The Bible says, bring all the tithes, the whole tenth. And when he says all, he means everything that we have been, our income, everything that has, we've been increased by, he wants us to bring that into the storehouse. And that is a reason why he wants us to bring the children of God, the living saints, to bring uh, the tithes into the storehouse. He said that there may be food in my house. And then he says, prove me. And so we have to understand that if everybody was living right, if everybody or should say most people were Christians and they were doing the word of God, we would not lead, need the government. We would not need uh, a lot of organizations uh, and charitable organizations. All we would need is the church because God says bring uh, the, all the tithes uh, and the income uh, from the saints into his storehouse, okay, uh, and prove me now by it says by by it says the Lord if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to you receive for you to receive and so he says bring in, bring all the tithes to the storehouse and then the storehouse will distribute and that's what Paul them did back in the day they would distribute when the saints brought tithes into it and whatever they had to the church then they would distribute it and they would do it fairly and they would distribute it among uh, those that need it. Uh, they were in need, okay? And so God asks, he says, you know, we talked about this last week. He says, prove me. He says, try, test me, and see what I'm telling you, that when you bring it, and I'm going to bless it, and, and, and I'm going to not over bless what you bring, that it will multiply. I'm going to bless you for bringing it, okay? And he talks about opening up the windows of heaven. And, and James, I, li I like what he says, because when we talk about opening up the windows of heaven, I want to remind you what James said over in chapter, uh, chapter 1, James chapter 1, verse 17, part 8. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all. So we have to understand that when, when God opens up the windows of heaven, he's going to pour us out a blessing. He's going to pour us out good gifts, okay? It says every perfect gift. That means free, large, and full comes from above. And one of the things we want to do, we always want to live in a way, we want to give in a way so that the windows of heaven, so that everything that God has that's good for us, that he's promised us, that's going to come from heaven, that we will receive it. We want every perfect gift to come down from heaven that God has already said that we could have. And a lot of times, God has already made provisions for us to be blessed. He made provisions for us to be blessed when Jesus died on the cross. How many understand that? When Jesus died on the cross, he, he was making provisions for us, for us, our sins to be forgiven, for us to have health in our bodies, for us to uh, have peace of mind, for us to be uh, more than conquerors, for us su su to supply all of our needs. All of this stuff was done. And so we have to understand that our blessings come from God will open up the windows of heaven and he will pour us out a blessing. And God is not short on any of his blessings. He can bless me with everything that I ask and bless everybody in here and everybody in the whole world with everything that they ask. Every perfect gift. And so, and so when, when we talk about opening up the windows of heaven, we have to understand that God will supply our every needs. And not only will he just, when you open, when you open up, when heaven opened up, you, you think in terms of, of rain falling, falling on the crops, falling on the seed so that it can what? Grow. All right. And 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 all all good things come from heaven. Even even bad folks want stuff from heaven. 
No, nobody asked, nobody asked any, any, nobody ask of anything from hell or from the devil. They always ask, am I telling the truth? They always asking for good things that from God or from heaven. And so we must, we must understand that. And, 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 and we go on, uh, he says, pour you out a blessing. Blessing, when he says pour out, he's talking about free, large, and full, that there will not be room enough to receive. So over in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, here again, uh, A, the Living Bible says, For if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you. Look at how it's going to return to you. And that's why we, you know, I like this, this version. It re, it's going to return to you. Uh, it's going to return to you. The Amplifier says measured, pressed down. Good measures. That means more. More than enough. Good measures. When it's filled up, then you're going to turn around and press it down. So you can get some more in there, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Will they pour into the pouch form? And so I, I, I like what I like what the, the Living Bible says. Uh, it says, "For you, for if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you in full, overflowing measure, pressed down, shaking together to make room for more, and what running over." All right. And then he says something real important here because you have to understand something that when you when you make up your mind that you're going to do the will of God and do the word of God and do what God calls you to do and tell you to do, you have to understand, especially when you pray out loud, the enemy hears everything you say. When you say, Lord, I'm going to be a giver. Lord, I'm going to do what you say. Lord, I'm going to try your word. Lord, I'm going to prove you. Guess who hears that? The enemy. And so what he does is he comes against you and God knows that. So he puts the he, he puts it in his word. He, he puts it in his word. Uh, he, he has he has in his word to combat that. And so it says, and I will rebuke the devour. Aha, uh -huh, there he is. The enemy always shows up. The devour always shows up when you set out to do what God called you to do or when you set out to be obedient to his word. He says, and I will rebuke the devour. That means back then it was the insects and plagues for your sake. Rebuke here means prevent, put a stop to. So when the enemy starts to try to take from you and steal from you and, 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 and pause in your crop and your seed, guess what God says? I'm going to rebuke that. I'm going to put a stop to that. But he only does it when you have a mindset and a will and you walk in obedience to give him like he says to give. Okay? And, and so the, it says, so the Hebrew word trans, translate devour means eater. I want us to remember that, eater. All right? E A T E R, and it refers to the locust or callip, uh, caterpillar or any such creature that devours crops. Look at there. So when he said, so back in the day, the devour was, was, was the insects and the plagues. Here again, the, 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 the uh, Greek Hebrew word translates devour means eater. All right? He said, the NIV translation says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. We're going, to get to, we're going to get to what I cry. See, we're talking about, we, we want you to understand what the Bible is talking about back in the day uh, because Israel had crops and they had livestock and so on and so forth. And that's the way they made their living, okay? And they used the barter system to trade. You know, they trade animals and fruits and vegetables and so on and so forth, all right? And that's, and that's how they made their living and, that's, how, and that's, how they, that's what they lived on. All right, and so he says the devourer could also ref be referred to as plant diseases, Really, the devour was anything that would, that would destroy Israel's crops. Okay? And so the New Living Translation says, Your crops will be ab uh, abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Isn't that something? The next thing it says, Swarms of locusts were, were common in the Middle East in those days and could destroy virtually all the produce of an entire country. Isn't that something? So when they talk about uh, when they talk about insects and, 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 and plagues, it was bad. It was bad. Insects would come and destroy whole crops, and 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 uh, diseases would come and destroy uh, trees and fruit trees. Anybody ever seen the disease on any fruit trees? It's it's it's, it's, it's rough, man. I mean that big old pretty tree, and next thing you know, you see that little stuff. Uh, bubbling on you see ants you you see uh sap on the outside and and you see limbs start to die and dry up uh 
It's not, a, it's not a, in other words, you know that you're probably not going to get any fruit off of that one. And it's, it's a bad feeling. And so he says, he talks about, he says, the devastation brought by locusts could be horrific. When God says he will rebuke the devour, he promised that he would protect Israel from such disasters. And how many of you understand that in this modern day, our modern day devour, our modern day eater comes in all types and situations and circumstances. So in today's time, the eater, the devourer, which we call the eater, he comes in all types of situations and circumstances. We have to understand that as we live, life just happens. And the only thing that is sure and certain in this life is change itself. So let's talk about, so let's talk about the, eater, the, the, eater, the eater in our life. The eater comes. The devour. I want you to, I want you to, and I want you to see when we say the word devour, when you see the word devour, I want you to think of the word eater. E-A-T-E-R. Okay. Think of, think, y'all remember the game Pac-Man? I remember Pac-Man. How he, yeah. That, that's the devour. Okay. And so the, 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 the devour comes in today's, uh, in today's society. And this is what he looks like. The devourer, the eater comes through finances. That means loss of job, income. And so a lot of times when we don't, when we're not obedient, we're not giving like God tells us to give. When he says give 10%, when he says pay tithes and offerings, and, and we don't do it, the devourer comes. And he comes through finances. We have problems. Some people lose their jobs. Income, don't have enough income. And then people have money, but they, they, they mismanage their funds. Okay, they don't, they don't have the wisdom to manage. So they, they steal from God. They take, they, God says give 10% and he'll help them manage the 90%. They steal from God and they got 100%, but the problem is they're mismanaging it. So it still does them no good. And I want to say this if, about giving. See, the Bible talks about making up your mind, that being intentional. Go ahead and promise. Most of us already know if you're on fixed income or if you are on, uh, if you have, if, if, if you're still working, fixed income or you're still working, most of the time we know what we're going to get per two weeks, per month. Am I telling the truth? We pretty much know. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to watch the enemy. The enemy Will 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 slick. Or he he'll get in there and he'll say, well, you know, you know what your bills are, you know what you have to do, and you know this came up and this popped up, and so you know, uh, God don't, <laughs> God wants you to pay your bills and you so and so and so so. So I don't think God minds if I just take this hundred dollars because I need it over here. Take this hundred dollars of tithes, because nobody knows anyway. Just between me and God, and, and God is okay. But what you have to understand, this is what you have to tell yourself, and this is how you have to deal with this. You have to immediately, because you know what you're going to get paid, and, and, and you know uh, whether you're going to pay from your net or your gross. That, you know, you, you can ask yourself, you know, people ask, am I going, am I, should I pay from my tithes from my net or should my tithes from my gross? Well, it depends on what kind of blessing you want. You want a gross blessing or you want a net blessing. It's up to you. But you have to understand that when you make up your mind and you're intentional and you right away, you know how much you get paid. So you say right away, I'm going to go ahead right now, right now. I'm not going to let it uh, go into where I need to pay this and pay that right away. I know what I'm going to get paid right away. I'm going to take this off the top and it belongs to God right away. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to think about it. It automatically goes to God. That's how you that's the mindset you have to have. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if you get it in your hands or you get it to in, in, in an account to where you can, you can take from it and, 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 and subtract and do other things with it, you will do it every time. And you have to watch the enemy. The enemy always gives you excuse uh, not to obey the word of God or he'll give you a good reason why you should not. But you must understand, you've gotta be, we got to be smarter than that. We've got to say in our mind, well, wait a minute, the enemy is trying to steal from me. I need the Lord. I need the, 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 I need the devour rebuked 
from me. I need God to put a stop to the devil in my life, but I also have to figure out how I'm going to give systematically, how I'm going to do it every time, and I've got to figure out because I, I, some, it's some about when I get money in my hand, I get, I get excited, I get nervous, I get to where I can't control myself because it has so much power in its resource that I can do so much with, and, and I just, I, I can't help myself sometimes. And what you have to do is you just have to say, wait a minute, let's do what's right. Let's do what's right. Let's make sure that God gets what he's supposed to have. Let's make sure that I am obedient and doing what God has called me to do. And see, when you do what God has called you to do, when you've been obedient and you've given your tent, give all the tithes, when you've given everything that you're supposed to give, when the enemy sticks his head up, when the devil comes against you, you can stand in confidence and say, Lord, I I've done what you asked me to do. Now I'm proving you. I'm going to see if you going to do what you said you're going to do. Yes, I, I, and, and guess what God does? Every time, every time he does not only what he said he's going to do, but he does more. But you have to understand, you have to understand, you have to understand and make up in your mind that off the top, that right away, that soon as I get it, that when it becomes increase in my life, increase in my paycheck, increase in my bank. Because some of us got to have direct deposit. As soon as it come into my, it come into my possession, my management, You get yours off the top because after all, Lord, I can't do nothing without you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to go to work. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to go to work and stay at work. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to even enjoy that which you have blessed me with. And so the either comes through finances, loss of job, income, mismanagement of funds. Poor spending habits, unexpected bills, all that represents the devourer. The eater also comes through medical issues. Every time you turn around, you got physical ailments, mental stress. See, let me tell you something. I know we have to go to the doctor, and I know we have to have medicine, but if some of us would, would, would pay all of our tithes and pay tithes, a lot of that would go away. God would heal you in a lot of areas. He'll give you discipline. And instead of the bill being $2,000, it might just be $25. And then your insurance take care of that. The eater comes. And so we see that the devourer comes in another area, and that's in repair and maintenance. Repair, repair and maintenance bill. Every time you turn around, you know, we always say this, if it ain't one thing, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Your house, you got, you got, you, look, maintenance has to be done on your house. Maintenance has to be done on your automobile. Maintenance has to be done or you got to replace your appliances every time it's either your house or your automobile or your appliance. Every time you turn around, something tearing up or something breaking down. Every time you turn around, I, as soon as you get one thing fixed, something else break. I, I remember when I first got married, it's like, you know, we didn't have no savings because every time we turn around, the car had to have uh, tires on it or my refrigerator went out or my stove went out or I had to get this part put on the car. Now, now I got to get O-rings put on. I got to get brakes put on. My air, condition, my air condition just went out. Now I got to pay to get the air fixed. I just had... I, Somebody just towed out my car. It wasn't my fault, but I still got to get another one. That was not in the budget. He will rebuke the devil. See, you, you see what you have to find, and, I, and, and I, I'm glad I don't have to find out the hard way. See, some people have to find out the hard way. They find out that stealing 10% costs them an arm and a leg. And you can't, you got to, you, first of all, you got to say, wait a minute, if I'm intelligent and God has given me wisdom, I must have enough sense to understand that the 10% that I'm stealing or part of the 10% that I'm stealing is not doing me any good. I always need more than what I took. 
So why don't I just give the little bit and give extra when I can and watch God teach me how to manage the 90 percent. And also every time the devourer come against me, watch him bless me. Watch him give me favor. Watch him have me give me the wisdom and knowledge how to fix some stuff that 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 ordinarily I wouldn't even know God shows God will show you how to save money he'll show you how to fix some stuff or he'll give you the name of somebody somebody be sitting around you maybe in church maybe in your family maybe your neighbor that knows how to do it and they'll do it for free you just got blessed by God yeah I told first lady, I said, I've got to, I'm going to put, the, I'm going to put, a, I'm, I'm going to put together a list of stuff that God has helped me to fix during this pandemic. I can just about walk in every room in my house and see something that I've fixed. In other words, I didn't have to pay for it. Didn't have to pay for it. And we just dealt with something here recently. But it, and, 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 and first lady and I, we fixed it together, fixed it together. Hallelujah. And it, and it was a party that cost $35. If we didn't know what we was doing, the motor itself would have been 138 just start. I ain't had to pay for labor. We were the labor. And when we ordered the party, it came in two or three days. And it was an essential, essential item. You can't tell me God won't come in and bless you and... and, and, and Okay, I've got to get through. I got to get through this because we 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 just we just about out of time. And so and so you have to understand that the eater comes in problem solving, decision making, and intuition. A lot of times we're not able to solve problems. We're not we're not able to solve problems because we didn't give. God promises protect us from the eater. And guess what He says? And he, the eater, shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vines drop its fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, your grapes won't shrivel away before they're ripened, says the Lord God Almighty. The things that God has blessed you with will mature. Whatever you have sown, the Bible says it will mature and produce fruit. Sometimes we sow stuff because we're not giving like we're supposed to, and before it comes and mature, it is destroyed. So the promise of God to rebuke the devour was conditional. The Israelites would cease robbing God and give their, if the Israelites would cease robbing God and give their whole tithe, then God would keep the locusts away from them and bless them with such abundance of healthy crops. And I want to say today, when we make up in our minds a purpose in our heart that we're going to give and give, him, give to him right away and give to him first, God will rebuke the devour. There will be some things that come against it that you know that God has blessed and have caused you to overcome and given you favor with. But then there are so many things that we don't even know that come against it that God stops it before it gets to our door. You don't know what kind of sickness trying to come down the line to get you. God stops it in his track. You don't know who's messing with your finance and trying to take money from you or stop or not, you, not give you a raise or, 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 or not give you the interest rates that you need or, or qualify for so that you can save money. You don't know any of that, but God does, and he stops and he rebukes the devour. If I was preaching a sermon, I would say, watch them eaters. Watch that eater. Don't allow the eater to take control. Don't allow the eater to have his way in your life. Do what you're supposed to do. And then guess what? You can. You can put a demand on God. You can put a demand on God. You said, God, you said. And always remember, God is not a God, not a man that he should lie. And he don't have to repent and he don't have to change his mind. I'll see y'all next week. I'm going too long. We'll see you next week. God bless you.